So uh, you, you may have heard me on the first day of class say that the test will be open laptop, right? <laughs> Which may be a first for you. And the reason, one of the reasons is that, right? I do not want to, I mean, we have to do these. This is, this is principle to this class, these problems of fault resolution, and, and we'll use these same rotation matrices for wellbore mechanics. I don't want to test you on how fast you can type into a calculator, right? Because if you had to type all that for every problem, it would be a mess, right? I mean, you'd probably make a mistake. I want to test you on identification of the angles and the importance of the problem, right? Because this thing right here, a computer can do perfectly. Right? A computer can solve that perfectly every time. In fact, uh, you know, for me to, to, to basically convert this to a function that's callable in MATLAB, uh, I mean in Mathematica rather, all I have to do is, uh, so in, in Mathematica the, the syntax is for functions is module. Um, I'm going to make a module called compute RG that takes the arguments alpha, beta, gamma, and um, returns this thing. So now, just like that, I have a function that will never make a mistake. What would it be? What if all three are, if all angles are zero? What should I get? The identity matrix. Right? I do. Right? So, when back here, there is the there is the rotation matrix again. By the way, and it's important that you hear this, the, this rotation matrix in Zobac's book has a sign error in it. This one is correct in my notes. Use this one, okay? It is my expectation that on your homework, in preparation for the exam, you write a function that computes this for you. A function, and you can use whatever programming language you want. Well, th that you will have available to you on your laptop or, or on the exam. Everyone have a laptop? Are you guys in the? Are you guys young enough that there is a laptop requirement for PGE that started a few years ago? Does anyone not have a laptop? Okay. I will also on exam day bring the department has some laptops that have MATLAB installed. Um, well, you know, have the COE desktop installed. So I'll bring those in here in the event that someone has a catastrophic failure or something, so um, it might be wise to have your, uh, the scripts that you're needing, your function files or whatever, um, on a USB drive in that, in that unlikely event. But nevertheless, it's my expectation that you write a program that computes this for you. Be an engineer, okay? Test that program. How do you test it? Well, I have test problems defined. Right? So again, um, you can, it's, it's pretty easy to uh, just compute RG, but uh, more specifically, I have some test problems defined of actually doing uh, the full rotation. So uh, I need to work on my font size here, but here uh, I'm giving you the input, okay? So the, the, here's the, the, the principal stress field. There's the angles. Now, on an exam or on the homework, I'm not going to give you the angles. It's, it's expected that you can identify. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you the angle, or in this case, though, in the test problem, I give you the stress field, I give you uh, the angles, and I give you, there's RG, and there's SG. So I give you the result. So these are test cases for your code. Okay, so let me go back a second. All right, so let's go back to the... Uh, Sorry. Um, let's go. Let's go finish our code, right? So, I've got compute RG. I can test the idea of writing small functions. Okay, is something 
uh, I want to talk to you guys about. You should write small functions so that you can test them in isolation. So I gave you RG, you know, I gave you the answer to RG in the test case solutions. Therefore, you can test this part of the code in isolation and understand if it's correct, okay? And then if you go on and you're getting incorrect answers or syntax failures for some reason, you know it's not in this part of the code, right? So it makes debugging easier. So as I continue, I'm going to write another module uh, called compute SG, and it's going to take as an argument the principal stress field and the angles uh, alpha, beta, gamma, And what it's going to do, the first thing it's going to do is call the function that we've already written. And we're going to, I'm not testing it here because I have confidence that it's right. One of the reasons I have confidence that it's right is because I used Mathematica to de derive it, right? It didn't, you know, I didn't type anything in there in the derivation. So we're going to, the first thing compute SG is going to do is call compute RG. It's going to return a matrix RG, and then that, and then I can use that to return the transpose of RG times S times RG. So now I have another function, compute SG, and let's now test this function, right? So uh, for our example problem here, our stress field is 30, 25, 20. Um, and the angles are 0, 0, 90. So there's the result. There's the stress in the geographic frame. This is SG, right? 30, 20, 25. So let's check the result. 30, 20, 25. Okay. So I give you multiple examples. Right? So there's another example for normal faulting. You can test your code with that. Strike slip faulting. So let's go ahead and work this example too. So here we have 60, 40, 35 is our stress field. Yeah. That's the stress in the geographic frame. Right? Yeah. So what we're going to do in next class is then take, take it from the geographic frame. We're going to define a new set of rotations that take us from the geographic frame down into the fault. And then once we know the stress on the fault itself, we can determine if it's going to slip. So this is just to define this, the stress in the geographic frame. And again, this is an important concept because we're going to use it later in, in wellbore geomechanics. Um, that equation? So this is compute SG, right? So this is compute SG, but this is just, you know, we learned this in the context of linear algebra also, right? This is just how tensors and matrices transform. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is compute RG, and then we can rotate it via this, right? So, again, just for completeness and to convince you guys uh, that my code is correct, let's look at this case of strike slip vaulting for 60, 40, 35. Um,
and the angles are 135, 0, 90. And there's our SG. And there's the answer.